Yo, what's going on guys? I'm Sam. Welcome back to another video. So earlier today, <laughs> Samsung did a lot. They had a big press event where they announced their flagship smartphones for the next year, S10, S10 Plus, the S10e, a lower cost model. But they also announced the first ever smartphone that made me uncomfortable. Now I've been doing this for about six years now, covering Apple and related technology. That is what I do here on my channel. But I have never seen a phone up until today that has actually made me say, wow, I don't wanna do my job anymore. If I have to cover this, I'd rather quit my job than to have to talk about foldable phones. That's right, yes, I know. We're talking about the Samsung Galaxy Fold. As the name implies, it's something that you don't wanna touch. I saw rumors about this and I said, surely Samsung's not gonna do a foldable phone because no one needs to announce four smartphones at the same time. Three makes sense, you know, two higher end models, one lower cost model. It's the model that Apple's been using, <laughs> model. It's the model like a uh, pricing scheme that Apple's been using for a couple of years now. So Samsung hopped on. They did something very similar last year with the S9. And to be fully transparent, I'm not an only Apple user. I've used Samsung products before. And while they're not right for me and my workflow, I get it, a lot of them really good. I love the Galaxy S9, it's just that it didn't run iOS and it wasn't my personal favorite. But the story of the foldable phone is an epic saga that deserves ridicule because nearly every aspect, if not every aspect of this phone, is awful. Why are we doing this? I get limited bezels around a screen. You know, you actually get more screen real estate. I get maybe why you want a third lens. You can go ultra wide angle on a lens or get a different type of shot that you couldn't get with two lenses. Maybe you're integrating AR features into your phone or VR features into your phone and you need a third lens for that. That's cool. I'm down to talk about that literally all day. What I don't get is when you take a phone and you make a sandwich out of it. Because back in 2007, for all the cool kids that were around then, that was the best thing that we had on the market next to like the Palm Pre. And then we realized, oh, foldable phones are dumb. Why don't we just touch them straight off the bat? And everybody said, yeah, that's the best idea. Thanks, Roger, you're gonna get promoted. But now Jimmy's in the back and he's messing with all our accessories. Jimmy's taking two phones, taping them together, folding them over, and now Jimmy's serving a sandwich that nobody asked for. Nobody wants Jimmy's sandwich, but Samsung thinks that we want Jimmy's sandwich. And I hope that Apple or Google or any other phone manufacturer out there says, no, we saw Jimmy's sandwich, we're good. We're gonna watch this one from afar and not get anywhere near a foldable phone. So let's start off with the screen. Uh, that is obviously the big takeaway with this phone. It's got a 7.3 inch Infinity Flex display. It's a cool name. It sounds very like Apple-esque, very grandiose, even though it's literally just a screen that folds. But the tech itself is cool. You can fold the phone and unfold it and the screen stays totally and completely intact. It's 7.3 inches diagonally in tablet mode. So when you unfold, the fold, <laughs> you can see why I love this phone. When you unfold the fold before you fold the fold back together, you then get a 7.3 inch screen. Uh, and Samsung actually makes really good screen tech. I've always been a fan of their screens, especially the way that Apple tunes the colors on things like iPhones and iPads. I like it a lot. The problem here is why you're gonna wanna carry around this phone and then unfold it and then look at a tablet when you could just carry a tablet around too. Because here's the catch with the foldable phone. It's twice as thick as a normal smartphone when it's folded. So you're basically carrying around two phones in your pocket instead of just one. But the thing that gets me really going here is the fact that on the front, there's a tiny little screen. Because for some reason you couldn't put the same, like you know, all screen design, edge to edge display on the front front of the phone when the fold is folded, you put a tiny 4.6 inch screen in here that they do a really good job in the marketing images of making look gigantic, like it fills the entire screen. But then you see this image and it looks like a little tiny block with bigger bezels than we were at when we hit peak bezel. We've hit peak bezel again in 2019, who would have thought? Reading through the rest of these specs, just makes me more angry because of the absurdity of the extent to which they wanted to spec this phone out. Because you need 12 gigabytes of RAM in your phone. I'm rocking four on my iPhone XS and I've never had an issue with it, ever. I've got like the same amount on my iPad Pro. I think it's three or four gigabytes of RAM. And again, I've never had an issue where I've said to myself, man, I could, Gosh, gee, I could use some more RAM in that next phone. Just like nobody asks for foldable phones in general, 
nobody was asking for 12 gigabytes of RAM in a phone ever. And going right along with your 12 gigabytes of RAM is something that's relatively more practical. You get a 512 gigabyte internal SSD or flash storage in here. So for all those pictures you're taking on the triple camera setup, because even your foldable phone is going to have three lenses in 2019. Quite honestly, the most exciting part of the Samsung Fold for me is the size of the battery. Because I guess it's so thick and it's like having two smartphones next to each other, you get a 4,380 milliamp hour battery. And if there's one thing I do deserve, rightfully so, to commend Samsung for, it's their battery sizes. They have beat Apple year in and year out in battery. And Apple and Google and everybody else in the game needs to get that locked down. Samsung's batteries have been ahead forever, besides a little... You know, I don't even want to mention the little battery issue they had a couple years ago. But by and large, Samsung has been dominating the battery game. They have been able to stack a ton of milliamp hours in a very small space, and they continue to do so with the Samsung Fold. That is the most exciting part of this phone for me, is the fact that the battery life is just going to be insane, probably because you're going to have it folded most of the time anyway. Now, when I say that I saved the very best part of this phone for last, I mean that I saved the very best part of this phone for last. The price of the phone. People have been railing Apple and Google and Samsung in recent history. The smartphone is too expensive. I agree, $1,000 for a smartphone is a lot of money, but Samsung said, you know what? Not only are we gonna sell you this sandwich, not only are we gonna have that sandwich fold in half, and not only are we gonna give you 12 freaking gigabytes of RAM, we're gonna charge you, no, not $800, no, not $900. Did I hear Jack in the back for $1,500? No, everybody's wrong, $1,980 for the Samsung Fold. You know what? I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it. This is gonna make a lot of people angry, but $2,000 is too much for a smartphone. Ooh, somebody in marketing drank a little bit too much one night. I think uh, <laughs> I think Samsung has been hanging out with old Tim Cook at Apple too much. I think they, they started doing a little round table about pricing and they just kept bidding against each other and saw who could get higher. Now you might say, Sam, but wait, you're being too critical. Not only do you get a, a wonderful smartphone for $1,980, you also get a tablet because it folds. That's the whole point of a foldable phone. Not only am I about to make a foldable phone for you right now, that's right, right here in this video, not only can you buy an iPhone XS for less than $1,000, you can throw in an 11 inch newest 2018 iPad Pro and still be $180 under budget of what Samsung is charging for just one foldable phone. This phone would not be nearly as laughable had Samsung said $1,000 or even $1,500. I would still be roasting it, but not to this extent. But $2,000 for a smartphone, dude, what are you thinking? No one in peak smartphone adoption is going to say, you know what? I've been saving up for a while and instead of feeding my family, I wanna fold my phone. Because of the way tech works, I could very well eat my words in a few years, but I don't believe in the future of foldable phones. In fact, I think foldable phones are the biggest gimmick that the tech industry has ever construed. I think they're trying to make us think that these are cool, that we want these, that this is something desirable. But with a price tag of nearly $2,000, really no benefit other than carrying a phone and a tablet around with you at the same time. And at that, the tablet screen is only eight inches big. I don't see a future where foldable phones win over anything else or even become a viable option. So to close out this video, I think that Samsung had great intentions with the foldable phone. And in some regard, I do respect them for doing something different. Uh, I think it is important to highlight when a company doesn't just blatantly copy another. Apple copies companies all the time. Samsung copies Apple and other companies all the time. Google copies companies all the time. That's part of tech. I don't ever fault anybody for doing that. But at the end of the day, Samsung took one smartphone with a screen on one side and a screen on another and paid people to assemble that to another phone it does this. This is Samsung's foldable phone. It's called the Samsung Fold, and it's the worst tech invention that I've ever seen. What's up, guys? We're here with the Samsung Galaxy S Fold. I made it myself for $1,748 here in the United States. It's an iPhone XS and an iPhone XR together, because now 
you can see on two screens that you still don't have any friends. Don't mind me, I'm just using my Samsung foldable phone. Um, I just got it today and it's pretty cool. It's actually like having two smartphones and a tablet all in one. If you guys like the Samsung Galaxy S Fold, sound off in the comments below. Fight me because I feel pretty strong about this one and I could be wrong. You know what, I look forward to being wrong on this one. I want the Samsung Fold to explode. I want everybody and their mom and their grandma and their dog and their cat to be using the Samsung Fold in a year or two years. I'll give, I'll give Samsung 10 years for foldable phones to explode. That's it guys, that is all I have for this video. I went through about a half roll of tape doing those takes. This is the Samsung Fold and as you can see, I've now got scotch tape on various parts of my body. Um, let me know your, your guys' thoughts about this down below, for real. Are you gonna buy this? Is this laughable? Am I being overcritical of Samsung? Maybe I am. I don't think I am, but maybe I am. Um, that's all. Thank you guys for watching. Hit like if you enjoyed. Hit subscribe for more. And uh, I will catch you all in my next video.